What's up, fantasy people? I'm Nick Capozzi. This is Razball Radio. This is the Fantasy Sports Network. But you probably already knew that because you're tuned in. And it's Friday, so who do we have on but Friday? But Sky. It's Friday. It's Sky Day. What's up, Sky? Ah, not much, Nick. It's it's Friday. I'm rolling into the weekend. Looking forward to another slate of football. So what do you yeah. got planned for the weekend? Uh, probably a couple of house projects. Um, if uh, my angry wife has anything to do with it, so uh, <laughs> did, yeah. Did you say your angry wife? Yeah, my <laughs> lovingly angry wife. How about that? <laughs> you know, this clip is going to be used in the divorce proceedings. Of course, yeah. <laughs> giving as much fodder as I can. All right, let's get to some fantasy football. As much as I would like to give you some marriage advice and uh, help break that down, although here's a piece of advice, shave next time. Yeah. yeah. Well, how about you, sir? All right, bristle face. i just kidding. I love you. It's Friday with Sky. You can follow him on Twitter at Sky underscore Razball. Let's get to the observatory. This is what we do here on Fridays. We break down things we're going to be looking at particularly we're going to put extra emphasis on watching football this weekend. So let's start with the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets versus the Bills. Mm -hmm. You're watching this timeshare, Booby versus yep. Bryce. Yep. How do you see that breaking down, brother? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to be really intrigued to see how they treat these two. In all honesty, I mean, you had Fred Jackson and you had Spiller before. Spiller was really – seem to be getting pushed out of the offense. He's a guy that seems to want to bounce it to the outside. He doesn't really want to run up the middle that much. I see Bryce the same way, and yet at the same time, you know, we'll find out if the Bills had a problem with C.J. Spiller or his running style, depending on how uh, how they treat these two. I think it's going to be booby in a 70-30 split, but, uh, you know, who knows? It is the Bills, so... Well, listen, I hope you get some booby. Hope you picked him up on the waiver wire. Hope you get some booby this weekend or last Tuesday from the angry wife. Okay, Jacksonville versus Miami. Uh, here's my – okay, I'm, I'm going to pick a fight with you right now, although yeah. I kind of already have today. You, you're you're going to talk down on Lamar Miller, and I, I'm going to make you counterpunch before you even punch, which I guess All is right. in the counterpunch. Here's the last four games for Lamar Miller. 14 mm -hmm. points, 17 points, 14.5 points, 15 points. What's mm -hmm. not to like? It's not that I don't like him. I just don't trust Joe Philbin. Have you seen him? He has crazy eye. Like, I don't trust that guy and how he treats his uh, his running backs. Uh, you know, even before, even when Moreno went down, I was still kind of skeptical. I'm, you're right. They have given him the rock a lot. But there's also been a lot of chatter about how Damian Williams has played well in the pass pro um, and they also still gave 10 touches to Daniel Thomas and where he would literally sit Lamar Miller for entire series almost. Uh, those are the kind of things that worry me is, you know, you still need volume. That's what causes you stress? That's what puts stress in your life? Daniel Thomas causes stress for everyone. He's just, <laughs> it's the kind of guy he is. He's but, just uh, not very good. Yeah, well, unfortunately, he still got 10 touches despite that. So, that right. worries we have a Wild West shootout happening in Glendale this weekend. Philadelphia oh. comes to the Valley of the Sun. Um, is this the week Nick Foles wakes up? And before, again, I, I'm going to, again, counterpunch or pre-punch. If anyone speaks English proper, English isn't my first language, just for the record. I'm from Montreal. <laughs> it's not French either. It's kind of like a Franglish. Franglais is actually what they call it. Yeah, I barely understand you. Hockey. So now we're going to play the hockey. All right, so here's Nick Foles' first three game point totals. 14, 17, 26. Wow. He was on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, en feu, as we would en say feu. in French. That's probably bad grammar in French. Anyway, right now he's currently ranked as the 19th quarterback. Wow. So even with those three great first games when he was the first or second best quarterback with Matt Ryan, man, yep. what a crazy four or five weeks it's been. Mm. But here's the thing. Arizona's 24, 21st against the pass, which is a bit surprising. So are we mm -hmm. going to see uh, Nick Foles, or is he just falling off? Uh, I was going to say a cliff, but is he falling into the Grand Canyon? Yeah, no, no that's, that's my there. question. He's got a prime uh, matchup with uh, the Cardinals, and this is going to be a telling sign. He's coming off of a bye week. He's going to be, you know, like you said, against that kind of uh, secondary this should be a guy that's prepped and ready to go. I should be seeing 300 yards and three touchdown passes. Um, but with the way he's played so far, 
Uh, you know, he's looked very unsure of his footing. He's been, you know, kind of guessing at throws. And I uh, saw a couple of those last week where he just kind of turned and chucked it right to a guy, assuming Darren Sproles or LaShawn McCoy was going to be there. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe the NFL has finally figured out his tendencies, but I'm very worried. So if he doesn't do this, then I'm done. Who I'm thought out. Philadelphia, Philadelphia's defense would be what's keeping them in games and getting them victories? I did not see that happening. I didn't think they'd be outscoring Nick Foles uh, TD-wise. I'll say that much. Oh, are they really? I don't know. It's got to be close at this point, especially over the last five weeks. Don't get bad stats. All right. Speaking of bad stats, you got to uh, help me out with this here because Pittsburgh and Indianapolis, I've been saying for a couple of weeks that offense looks out of sync for the uh, Pittsburghers. Yep. They need a second weapon. You're thinking maybe it's going to be a Martavius Bryant who has two catches on the air. So you got some explaining to do. Before you do, breaking news. Pramani Brothers Sandwiches out of Pittsburgh, the famous sandwich, now ships nationally. Ooh. Just saying. Mm. Just saying. There you go. There's a, some weekend fun. Get some Pramani Brothers. Okay, Martavius Bryant, he the number two? Is, it, is that really what you think is going to happen here? Well, I mean, for the first six weeks, it was, a, it was a bumbling offense, especially down in the red zone, and it was pretty apparent a big cog in that um, you know, clog up there was uh, Wheaton. He was, he was holding back. A cog in that clog? Yeah, I know. Mixing, mixing my metaphors here. So, uh, <laughs> but last week was uh, the first time we saw Bryant. So, you know, saying he only has two catches, you know, but that went for 40 yards and a touchdown, and he had five targets. Um, I, I want to see if uh, he can keep it rolling and if he can keep guys off of Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell down in the red zone because that was the problem earlier. Uh, Wheaton just wasn't doing that. They were able to stack the box and double up on Antonio and not really worry about Marcus. So, that's what I'll be looking for. I want to see how well he does this week against a tougher secondary. All right, real quick, I want to get to this before the break. Uh, you're thinking Jerick McKinnon is going to have a breakout party against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is actually 16th against the run, surprising as bad as they've been. And McKinnon, love him, but 10.5 points is his average last four games and zero TDs. Coming out party, yay or nay? You got 10 seconds. Uh, yay. No, there you go. Three seconds. Okay. I, it's, it's, it's what you're happened. known for. Three seconds, guy. Three seconds of having with Sky. All right. He's Sky. I can't say his last name. I'm Nick Capozzi. This is Rasball Radio. This is Fancy Sports Network. I have a cold. Don't know if you can tell. We'll be back right after this. Okay. Bienvenue à Rasball Radio sur le Fantasy Sports Network. We're mm. busting out all my French today. My horrible, horrible franglais. Okay. Uh, we are in the observatory looking at things that we're going to be extra looking at with extraness this weekend. New Orleans, Green Bay. Is Kenny Stills finally emerging? He's available in 3.6% of leagues. So if you want Kenny Stills, you can get him. Tell me why we want him. Uh, you know, Marcus Colson, he's uh, he's kind of he's aging, obviously. It's been pretty clear at the end of last year as well as the beginning of this year. And with Jimmy Graham still hobbled, they need somebody to step up and be a weapon in that offense. Uh, this game this weekend is projecting to be pretty high scoring, and it's also projecting to be close, which typically leans towards a passing game. And we got Drew Brees back there. Uh, he needs he needs a big target that he can rely on. And Kenny still dropped 100 uh, last week in a touchdown. I think he does it again. And I think after that, he gets rolling with Brees the rest of the season. All right. The Titans take on Houston. The old Oilers taking on the Texans. Uh, ah. Listen, Mettenberger's in there. Love me some Mettenberger. I've been saying for three weeks, I'd like to see Mettenberger only because he's got a big arm and the only guy worth owning there other than Kendall Wright, I don't care how elusive Bishop Sankey is, is Justin Hunter. Justin Hunter going to go deep? We got some 100-yard games uh, coming up here. You know, that's what I'm thinking. I, you know, Mettenberger, the big thing with him was his big arm coming out of college and that he was and he was willing and able to chuck it up and let his receivers do some work. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't really seeing any Justin Hunter – Esque games because we had uh, Char chuck it down Charlie Whitehurst who wasn't going to be throwing it down the field and letting wide receivers do their job. I can see plenty of jump balls coming Justin Hunter's way, uh, you know, and definitely a hundred yard game is in is in play with Mettenberger now in there. Okay, that's fair. I'd actually if I need to start Justin Hunter this week, I'm comfortable doing that because I think Mettenberger is just going to air mail. So we'll yep. see how that goes. Speaking of seeing how that goes, I want to see how this running game for Cleveland is going to work. Without Alex Mack, it didn't look very good last week. They're up against Oakland, the 25th worst run defense. As far as yep. I'm concerned, the Browns need that running game cooking yep. for this team to be competitive. Uh, you think they're going to reestablish it or what? Yeah, um, I mean, it's possible. You know, it was it was a one-week turnaround from losing <clears throat> Alex 
against the Steelers. So, you know, and they are back at home. So to, it'll be a telling sign on how they uh, and how they react the second week with with Alex being out. But it was really clear that that affected their run game, which in in general, if they don't have a run game, they don't have an offense. And that was pretty apparent uh, last week against the Jags, where they couldn't score a touchdown for four quarters. So I do look for them to stay on the ground. Um, and it is Oakland. So, yeah, I could even see Crowell going wild today. All right. I got to push the cough button here for a second because I got a cough. All right. Again, I'm okay. you did. I'm okay. <laughs> hey, look, I show up. I <laughs> might have some strange, bizarre disease, but yet mm -hmm. I'm here. Because it's Friday. Yeah. It's Sky Day. All right. Even if it's killing me. Okay. Kansas <laughs> City, St. Louis. So, Trey Mason, real buzzy this week. Yep. Liked him going into the preseason. What I didn't like against Seattle, and I, I'm sorry. I've said this four times this week. Rewatch that whole game. Unless yeah, unless uh, St. Louis created a huge uh, hole in that offensive line, Trey Mason didn't look elusive. Yep. So, tell me, sir. What you're looking at with uh, Trey Mason, especially when Jeff Fisher says Zach Stacy might get the ball 25 times, you're stressing me out, Jeff. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we all knew that that backfield was a mess. Even when Trey seemed like he was emerging, most people didn't trust it, and this is the reason why. There's still a three-headed back system, but the big thing is, is Trey Mason. Even if he does become the lead back, does he get any of the touches when uh, it's uh, playing from behind that's the big issue I don't see he hasn't been involved in the passing game doesn't sound like he will be involved in the passing game and KC projects to be winning this game by almost a touchdown so they are going to be playing from behind how involved is he going to be in games like this and maybe that's where the Zach Stacy Stacy talk is coming from yeah I'm not comfortable starting him you know I said this week with the three kind of running backs were Buzzy Robinson Bryce Brown and Trey Mason if, I was swinging, if I'm 2-5 and five and I'm swinging for the fences because I need a home run, I think Bryce Brown is the most upside this year. Mm -hmm. I think yep. Bernard Robinson is the safest because he has a starting job. And Trey Mason, I need to see more. And I, yep. I know you don't want to hear that because you want to hear, pick up Trey Mason, or you know you want something definite. But I need to see more before I'm going to go and spend on a guy like this because I'm yep. not believing right now. If I had to spend, I would have spent on Robinson. Okay, the Carolinas versus the Seattles. Yep. Uh is Seattle's defense no longer dominant? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they've kind of proven it of late. Um, I, I don't know. I think we might be dealing with – there's there's obviously some things going on here. One, we've got injuries that are affecting them. Um, and also, let's, let's not forget the Super Bowl hangover. Uh, we saw the Ravens' defense kind of go from stout to, to non-existent their second year. Uh, defense takes a little bit of emotion and a little bit of swagger. And if, uh, if you're not quite up and – ready to go you ain't gonna have it so uh will they respond after the recent lapses with against cam i i have my doubts i don't think uh you know whoever this is why you don't draft defenses early i'll just put it that way yes correct okay let's get to some start sits we got a minute here before we go break yeah you're starting kyle orton this week i'm with you love him 15 mm -hmm. points he's averaging his three starts um yeah. would you start him over nick Foles? <sighs> Nah, not, nah. Over, not over Nick Foles just because of the spread. That's the only reason, and plus Nick Foles could sneak it in for a run. Orton's not going to be running anywhere other than backwards if the Jets get in on him. So, You could argue it's not crazy to say that yeah. maybe there's more offensive weapons in Buffalo than Philadelphia. Think about that for a second. Would you mm -hmm. take Sammy Watkins talent-wise over any of the Eagles receivers? <sighs> Yeah, no, that is that is fair. I mean, Macklin's a volume play. I wouldn't say that he's the most talented wide receiver. So, no, that's that's fair to say. They've got an up-and-coming team. And, uh, yeah, All it's right. hard to argue that. You're starting Theo Reddick. Tell me why you're starting him when he has nine carries for 28 yards. you got uh, 15 seconds. Uh, because he had a 75-yard receiving touchdown, and uh, the Atlanta Falcons stink against the running, uh, running backs. Yeah, but you got to remember, they're in London this week against Atlanta, so they're not playing football, they're playing rugby. And he's not a very good flanker. Just keep that in mind. Okay, I kid. Hey, real important, though. Atlanta, Detroit is in London. This is not a 1 p.m. Eastern start. It is a 9.30 a.m. start. Remember mm -hmm. that. Yep. Saved a lot of people a lot of stress with that. Okay. Um... You know what? Let's go to break. We'll come back. We got more start sits with Sky. You can follow him at Sky underscore Rasball because he doesn't have a last name. Rasball Radio, Fancy Sports Network. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back, Rasball Radio, Fantasy Sports Network. Nick Sky, we are talking start sits. Let's get through it. Still a bunch to get to. You are starting Niall Davis, RB number 47. Mm. That's so surprising. Why are you doing this? Well, we've, uh, like I said, you know, you look at Vegas and how they're viewing the game. Uh, you know, I, I can't see the Chiefs in the way that they play. And given Austin Davis's numbers so far on the road, uh, you know, he gets pretty loose with the ball. Uh, he has four interceptions in his road starts. And Casey doesn't want to relinquish the ball, nor do they really want to throw it. So they're going to stay on the ground. And uh, and they're going to be having a fairly large lead for most of the game. So I can see them splitting up the carries and getting plenty of carries for both Jamal Charles and Nile. And let's not forget that Charles did the whole ancient aliens guy from history thing. I'm not saying I had a concussion, but I had a concussion. I love so, ancient aliens. So, uh yeah, so I could I wouldn't be surprised if Davis maybe even out touched Charles, all depending. It's not crazy to think that. I think they'll both be viable though. You know what's crazy? Do you really watch Ancient Aliens? No, no. I've just seen that that you gotta clip. You got to see the guy with the hair. This cra- the guy's hair. He's one of the main guys, the Greek guy. Ella, <laughs> for why you do your hair like this? Uh, would you uh, rather have not would you rather start Nile Davis or Theo Reddick? Gun to your head. Uh, I'd have to go Reddick uh, just because Asiata had three touchdowns against those Falcons, man. Matt Asiata. Yeah, that tells enough. Matt Asiata. Okay, Kenny Stills. We talked about him earlier. You're starting him wide receiver number 56. I'm with you. Jimmy Graham's not healthy. Marcus Colston is old. Yeah. He's older than dirt. So yeah. we don't even need to talk about that one. Let's move on. Yeah, let's do it. Here's one that's interesting to me. Mm. Big game last week. Yep. Love this guy long term. People are like, who? Gavin Escobar. Yeah. He's not yeah. going to replicate what he did, but he's proven in that offense he could be viable. Why are you starting him this week, though? Uh, well, the Redskins have kind of proven they're very they're very soft underneath. They play back on on the receivers, uh, so you know a lot of different you know a lot of little short slant passes typically work against them. Um, you know, and a lot of check down passes. So I do think this game is going to be played um, underneath by Romo for the most part. There's no reason to go downfield on him. There's no reason to take any chances. Uh, so Escobar is, and he's also kind of excelling in terms of the passing game over Witten at this point. You know, Witten seems to not be able to create separation. Uh, still a great blocker, still a great NFL player, but no longer the fantasy relevant tight end that he used to be. So I can see Gavin Escobar sneaking in there for 40 yards and a touchdown, um, which can put him in top 10 range for tight ends for the week. So. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. Love me some Gavin Escobar. Okay, let's talk sits. Jordan Cameron, here's why you should sit him. He's dating mm. a Victoria's Secret uh, you know, underwear model. But he's distracted. <laughs> not that he's injured. He's yeah. distracted. Is this the Rihanna-Matt Kemp argument? Is that is that where uh, we're going? Actually, you should Google. Google Jordan Cameron's girlfriend. Wow. All right. First. I'll, I'll do that on my free time. Um, when, when your wife is angry at you this weekend, lock yeah, yourself in the yeah. office. Start Googling <laughs> Victoria's Secret models. Typical weekend for Sky. Yeah. Uh, but you're sitting them. Yeah. Th- I mean, the problem is, is the matchup looks great on paper, mm-hmm. much like it did last week, but there's no passing volume in Cleveland. They've attempted the third fewest passes in the NFL, and that's just attempts. We're not even talking about completion percentages, which is pretty low. Um it, there's just there's not enough volume there to count on him from week to week, and I can't see Cleveland wanting to get away from the run game this weekend. You know they want to control the clock and they want to control the ground game, and which will keep Derek Carr on his toes. So I just don't see him getting involved enough to be viable in in top ten uh, tight end production. Yeah. Also, too, if you have a bench spot, pick up Johnny Menzel this week. If you have it, I got a feeling we're going to see Johnny Menzel real yep. soon. You're sitting Larry Fitzgerald in the Wild West Western shootout. Here's something, though. This is not a crazy statement. Philadelphia and Arizona's defense could out-touchdown both offenses. That could happen. (laughs) That'd be an interesting prop bet in Vegas. But you're sitting Fitz. Would you rather start Fitz or Michael Floyd against Philadelphia? Oh, Floyd all day, every day. I I, I have a funny feeling Floyd's going to be going off for possibly two touchdowns in a 100-yard game. Uh, Just score a touchdown, Michael Floyd. Just... Just one, and then and then we'll work on number two. No, uh, you know, Brandon Boykin is one of the best, uh, if not the best, uh, corner slots or slot corners in the league. So, 
with Fitz, that's that's where he's at right now. And obviously, he hasn't even done enough for you to want to start him um, up to this point. Despite the fact, despite that fact, he'd still be putting in uh, at wide receiver 28 on Fantasy Pros. I'm just not seeing it. Um, even if the volume is there to keep him viable, I just, you know, maybe you're hoping for four and 60. And that's just not really that much to get excited about yeah. in terms of. I'm with you. This one surprised me. You're sitting Deshaun Jackson, wide receiver 21. Why? Uh, our good old friend uh, Colt McCoy, uh, he has uh, Chuck It Down it's Charlie. We're going to see our G3 start. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if he's healthy enough to do that. But I I think it's going to be Colt McCoy, which means you're going to see plenty of passes to Mal Paul and Jordan Reed and Pierre Garçon. You know, d is a down-the-field guy, and Cousins, for all his uh, warts, he was willing to chuck it down the field all day, every day. You're not going to get that from Colt. So, you know, Deshaun was surviving on getting those 50- to 60-yard passes on, like, four or five targets a game. He's not going to see that in this game. It's okay. just not going to happen. We got to go quick here. A couple guys to get to. Eddie Lacy, you're sitting him after his first three cluster bombs. First two games were terrible. He's averaged 14 points a game, so it's not too bad. But I might start. Well, I'm not. I would rather start Chris Ivory or even Justin Forsett over Eddie Lacy right now. Is that why you're sitting him? Did I yeah, just did I just steal your thunder? No, no. He's in a timeshare, and even last week he should have had a monster game, and he still lost a touchdown and about 40 yards on seven carries to James Starks. He's not the number one back in that. He's in a timeshare, and he's and he's and he's no longer in the passing game either. I suppose they're looking like so. There's just no reason to get that immersed in him on a week to week basis. All right, the NFC North was known for killer defenses and lousy offenses. No one thought though that Detroit would be in that role. You're sitting Matt Stafford. I'm kind of with you. No Calvin. I gotta sit him. You got uh, 15 seconds here. I, is the, again, did I steal your thunder twice? No. Nope. You're gonna fire yes. me. He has zero reasons to throw. It's the Falcons. They are going to be running on it all day, and it's going to be dink and dunk. You're hoping for something out of the backfield where Theoretic gets a 75-yard touchdown pass, right, and that's Scott, about it. Hate to cut you off. we got to get out of here. Don't forget Detroit, Atlanta, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Okay, this is Red Bull Radio, Fantasy Sports Network. We'll see you uh, on Monday. Okay, hopefully I'll be here if I'm not dead. Love you. Bye.